Okay, uh, Jonathan has a question for us, okay? Jonathan says this, I have been on easy strength for fat loss for the last eight weeks and I have lost eight pounds so far. Hey man, a pound a week. That's, that's really good. I don't care what the program is. That's good. I plan on con continue doing it for another 12 pounds or so and varying the exercises. I now work a desk job, so no need for super high level of strength, but I want to continue to get stronger. Um, I'm going to put an article this week in uh, Wandering Weights about this uh, doctor, a female doctor who lost all his weight. And one of the things she said is get stronger. You know, don't use the cardio, use the weight room. So yeah, I think you're on the right track. My question is as follows. On a previous podcast, you talked about how people respond to volume differently in regards to their one rep max. I was doing the 531 program a few years ago. I was very discouraged to discover that my one rep max was only 20 pounds heavier than my 11 rep max, which is around 325 for 11 in the deadlift at the time. If someone is a lifter who has less rep sensitivity to the weight supplied, do you recommend changing up the rep scheme? In other words, would you recommend me lifting five sets of two with heavier weight versus two sets of five since volume appears to be less of a factor in max strength for my situation. You know, that is fascinating. We can, this is an issue that's come up many times. In some of my first writing, I talk about my friend Lane Cannon, uh, the late departed good friend of mine, Lane Cannon. Terrible tragedy, his death. Um, and where he built himself up doing the hard gainer stuff to a trap bar deadlift of 405 for 20, which is a good lift, man. And then a couple of weeks later, he maxed out and only got 425 for one. And he was broken hearted. Now, if you're training high reps for all your training, you're probably not going to have that big, I got to break the world record attempt in you. The one rep maximum thing, um, it's funny because 51% of the world's population has this issue. Uh, the female athlete. Uh, it's always been interesting to me. I had a female friend who she could bench press 135 pounds for 10 reps. Her max in the bench press was 140. Went from 10, added two and a half plates on both sides, boom, one. Many females will have, uh, many women will have um, a poor press. Uh, so they can do lots and lots of reps but their max will be low. Um, I'm one of the luckier guys. I my, my reps on some exercises are not very good. You know, I'm not gonna impress you with my bodybuilder numbers, you know, three sets of eight. But if you say my name and I walk out on the platform, I've got a, I've got a big top end. And, and, and yay for me, I'm wonderful. And you know, everyone loves me and throws flowers at me. Um, this is an issue. Uh, it's been discussed a lot. Um, one of the things when the, the high intensity training people, the hard gainer people talk about this to death, they actually believe that uh, you're actually more gifted if, let's see, I can't remember. Okay, so if we ha it's 100 pounds and we both take 90, I do it for two reps and you do it for 10 reps. Uh, I remember reading the hard gainer saying that the person who does 90 for two is neurologically superior than the person who can do it for 10. So Jonathan, I hope that ruins your day knowing that I am neurologically superior to you. There you go, take that. Um, I think a lot of it, I don't even know if it's really neurological. I've always thought it has more to do with temper, uh, temperament. Um, I have the ability to dial uh, intensity on and off quite quickly. Um, well, in my book now, what, somewhere up, somewhere there, um, is all about that, you know, ratcheting up the thing when you need to. Uh, a lot of us who are just kind of hanging, like, for example, on you with your desk job now, um, you're probably spending a lot of time at your desk, you know, not, you're not, you're not out there, you know, fighting polar bears and, you know, traffic and, I don't know, what else, whatever one fights in a typical day. So, that is why I really do recommend that you you play with the reps. So if you read even easier strength, you'll notice that in a two-week period, I think I have one six singles day, 
maybe one or two tonic days, one set of 10, easy. But, and, and like I say in the new book, I say, if I could do it all again, I just tell everybody three sets of three and just never even answer another question. But uh, you will probably find that five sets of two, and I would stick with the same weight on that and get a sense for how each one feels. That might be some really interesting feedback for you. For me, if I stick with one weight, usually around the third set is a set I feel best. The fourth set, same exact weight, same exact amount of rest. My fourth set is like, hmm, wow, that was that was crappy. And my fifth one is, you know, um, you know, game breakers. It could be because I hate because I'm a Fibonacci uh, numbers a lunatic, and a four is not a Fibonacci number. But this is a good question. People talk about this a lot. Jonathan, I'd like to spend time with you in a, in a, in a facility, in a, in a gym, and just see where you are. For example, the deadlift, by the way, with the deadlift, a lot of people have that ability to do lots and lots of reps and not, a he and not much more with a single. I think because a deadlift takes a lot of, you know, argh, anger and stuff. And if you're just in the gym trying to, you know, trying to feel the weight, you don't have it. It'd be interesting to see what your front squat numbers would be like because, um, you know, uh, well, like in my case, I'll, I'll use the back squat, but if I could back squat a, a weight for one, I could usually do it for five because that's the way I'm built. Um, I don't know if I've ever actually had a max, max, max back squat because I always had more in the tank. Um, but this is a good question, and I, and I like and I like where your head's at on this. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. I really appreciate that. And I would like, if you don't mind, if you could follow up with a few other lifts where you're here. Here's your here's an amazing rep number, and here's a top end. You might find, uh, as some people have, as this is how we discover if someone is a squatter or hinger, a pusher or puller, because. Usually the exercises that you can bang out the big lifts are the ones you're really good at.